Hello and welcome back, MC1 Gamer here, still alive. Yes, I'm alive. Uh, haven't uh, haven't disappeared. I'm not dead yet, and uh, still looking to put out more content on YouTube. So, if you're a longtime subscriber, and if you're wondering why uh, the in, the videos have been a little thin lately, well, there's been a lot of things that have been going on. You know, real life uh, has a way of muddling with your hobby and uh that's what kind of has happened ever since october when i went away on vacation uh, which was right around the time of my wife's birthday uh it just seemed to cascade into the holidays and there just wasn't a lot of time to really dedicate gotten some painting done been doing a lot of that kind of stuff but uh you know haven't got as many games i have done some games but i just i didn't want to i didn't want to actually film them because a lot of times they were demos or uh, new players new people joining up and uh, I just want to make a comment about, first of all, what it's like to run one of these channels. Vince Ventrello uh, put out a video, uh, his topic of the week, and asked, you know, you know thoughts about running your own channel and advice. And I don't have a lot of advice. I could say that, you know, I, I use other people as an example, as an inspiration. I did watch and lurk for quite a long time, watching the likes of... You know, Malorian and, uh, and Once Bitten and uh, Ant from the Sustainable Center and a lot of other people that were kind of like, you know, paving the way for the Warhammer YouTubers before a lot of, you know, this, the next generation came in. And I watched, you know, and I'm, uh, I, I, when I went to get back in the hobby that, hobby, that was the first thing I did. And I learned a lot of things and asked a lot of advice, talked about, you know, asked people about how they do what they do. But then I just did it. And you might find that uh, if you're interested in doing that, that you might copy maybe some of the mannerisms or methodology of other people uh but i would say find your own way uh a lot of people make claims about what they think the best length of a video is or certain best practices there's some good there's some merit to some of those things i would give any advice the advice the best advice i would give to anybody who's looking to get into this uh would be kind of twofold one do, do, do your own thing you know you 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 want to try and find your own voice and find your own way but don't just try to rehash the same stuff that other people are doing in the same method in the same format and uh, uh and the second thing is is um uh you know the 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 this 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 is for fun this is not a business if you can make it and turn it into a business that's great anybody who wants to buy my uh, tremendous damage t-shirts that i'm going to have produced uh, or uh, banned by MC1 Gamer, <laughs> which I guess is a not so exclusive club. Uh, anybody who wants to, you know, to purchase those types of products, I'm going to be starting something like that up. But it's not common that people can make this into a business. You don't get hardly any revenue. I still have not gotten a check from Google AdWords yet. It's very difficult to make that your model. Your model should be, this is what I enjoy doing, this is what I have fun doing, this is what I want to do, and if you can get, you know, maybe get some uh, some donations or, you know, or, or any kind of, you know, uh, promotional items from companies that want you to spread the word on them, that's great, that's a bonus, that's a boon. Uh, if you meet people and, and meet players, I've met a ton of people all over the world because of doing this, and, you know, I'm just a, you know, a dinky little guy on friggin' on YouTube. I have a small little channel in the grand scheme of things. You know, drop in the bucket. It's not a lot of people. And, and certainly not when it comes to, you know, the, the, the heights that some people rise in the internet. We're in a small, very, you know, a very small group and a small segment within that group. So there's the most popular people have, you know, in the high thousands, not even, you know, tens of thousands. That's nothing on YouTube. You're not making a living doing this. This is for fun. So if it becomes not fun, if it becomes a job or a chore, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think you should consider that. If you really want to do this, do it at your own pace. Don't let anybody tell you what the rules are and enjoy it. Just have fun with it. Don't get too wrapped up in what you know people's feedback are is uh, I, I know that one uh, you, one well-known youtuber in our community recently put up some other videos and somebody jumped all over him just because it was the standard pdf uh not pdf um uh, uh photo not <laughs> um uh it was a standard slideshow that we normally use for battle reports and um uh he got he got a lot of shit for it and i jumped in there and said something to that person and kind of you know, made a comment about it, and I think I would do that for anybody. Just, you know, but there's a, you know, you're going to have, you know, your ass hats. You're going to have your people that are just going to say, you're going to shit on what you do, and just, you know, you, you, you defend yourself if you wish, or just ignore it and let it roll off your shoulders. But you can't let it bug you, and uh, certainly don't let it sway you. Uh, that's not the kind of thing. That, just have fun with this, or, or, or don't do it. You know, if, you, if you're not having fun doing this, 
there's no paycheck here, okay? And if you can make a pay, if you make it a paycheck out of it, great. Um, you know, it, 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 um, Patreon is, is a shot in the dark, and frankly, it's just donations. Don't think of it as a as a revenue stream, uh, as a way of you know subscriptions or anything like that. There's rare rare people that have done that, and the people that have done it were early adopters, and they've built an audience early on. It's very hard to do that now, especially carving a large enough. Uh, following in this niche hobby. So with that being said, let me move on. Um, I have a bunch of things that I want to talk about. I know a lot of people have asked a lot of questions. I mean, I've, I've, I've appeared on other people's shows and I've, you know, I've, 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 I've had a presence, I guess, uh, but um, really haven't, you know, really given you guys a lot of updates. So here's some of the updates. I got a bunch of things I want to talk to you about. First thing is, what am I working on? Well, I've been working on my Sylvaneth. I had the budget of Sigmar which a uh, commitment uh, that really I wanted to fulfill. And that was uh, building up on a budget on a monthly basis, getting and, and painting up in armies to prove, you know, not only that you can do it, but it's incentive for us who are, you know, I guess plastic gray models get challenged uh, where uh, you, know, you may need a little kick in the ass to do that. So it was a nice incentive that I decided, I, you know, when I had the time, I wanted to do that. So I'm not going to show anything because when these things are finally ready, I'll put them on the PMP, which if you don't know what that is, that's Painters Motivating Painters. Uh, it's an extension of the Warhammer YouTubers, and it's a way for people to showcase some of the really nice work. There's some amazing work, things I can only aspire to. I'm not in the category of any of these painters. I, I, I can hold my own in terms of tabletop quality, but some of the quality that is shown on here is just masterwork. I mean, amazing, heavy metal-like level quality, in my opinion. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, my big thing is converting, but, you know, then that's a whole other ball game. But I, I want to finish up my Sylvanet. So I'm working on finishing up my uh, two fairly large units of, of uh, dryads, and then I'm working on uh, completing the, uh, the Treekin, the um, branch rates, and of course I've got four of the um, ancient uh, tree men, uh, one of which is Durthu. So I, I really want to work on those before I really put any real paint on anything else. And uh, so that, that that's to come. I mean, I'm nearly done with the uh, dryads, and everything else is primed and ready to go. Even some 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 small work on some of them, like uh, the bases. But uh, I've got a lot of work to do. But I think I can get some of that stuff done because I'm really focused on it. And I put a lot of other things aside to really focus on that, really get my first units in 2016 completed with paint. So that's that's a huge um, uh, thing that I, I'm planning. Um, the next thing on, in line is um, is converting. You know, I, I want to keep running the Convert This uh, series that I've uh, been running for quite a while. Um, this is one of the examples. I had this on my table for quite a long time. I really haven't th had a motivation to use to build them uh, just because I've had other things that I just I keep starting and stopping projects. But these, this is um, the uh, Bretonian um, horse, and uh, this is the old school metal uh, chaos warrior bodies. I like because they have the cloaks. I love that. So I've taken the head away, and these are Bretonian. I don't know if you can really see this well. The Bretonian uh, backwards, of course. Um, putting the Bretonian heads in there, and I'm not sure if that's going to come out well in the picture, but I'll tell you where I'm going with this in a second. You guys can see my wonderfully uh, chipped away fingernails. Um, okay, so this is kind of where I'm going with this look. I saw this many years ago, um, many years ago, but a few years. It was before I started this when I decided that I was going to do the um, the uh, Musulan version of the vampire counts, which were uh, a it was it was an undead army, but Bretonian themed undead army. And I have stuck with this. This is a multi-year project. I have finished some units where with the theme I've made, I converted up a whole ton of um, zombies with those. I should revisit some of those, showed how I did it, what I did, you know, what's the progress. I have a whole bunch of stuff that is near complete or in partial completion. My, um, my uh, uh, mortise engine uh, is uh, all the guys on it instead of being just undead skeletons. They're all Bretonian knights with bits on there. So, uh, you know, all my um, hex wraiths are all, you know, questing knights with two-handed swords. Um, so th there's a lot of that I've that I put into that army, and I can still use it, of course, for Age of Sigmar. And the nice thing about it, it's a dual-purpose army. You can use it as a Bretonian army as well. So these are going to be my blood knights because... They don't have to be skeletal. I've got a whole bunch of the Black Knights already mashed up, uh, you know, primed and ready to be painted, of course. But these guys, I can use these guys as Blood Knights, and with the, with the black and yellow uh, uh, heraldry and the fleur de lis, and um, I can p put them on the field as Bretonians in a combined army, which I plan to do uh, either as a standalone or as a, um, or as in combination with like other 
you know, lore of of, uh, of light units like uh, like wood elves, I have the wood elves, the Sylvaneth, uh, and um, you know the, the dwarves in the dwarves. So there's a nice combinations I can use with that, and uh, that I think that works really well. As and I can also feel them again as blood knights because I don't have to have them in in vampiric form. I can have, I'm going to have like glowing red eyes on the horses and whatnot, but they'll still work as you know armored former you know uh, grail knights that are now blood knights and uh they, they work just fine and uh and and that's and that's how i'm going to be using them but i want to i'm converting them up make them a really different look so again the big furry cloaks the different types of armor but the bretonian helms so now i'm working on that i've been working a lot of terrain i've worked on a lot of terrain for bolt action that i can also use for frost grave for age of sigmar which i like i like the dual purpose stuff because you get more mileage out of it um, let's see, uh, for, speaking of Frostgrave, I've got Frostgrave, I've got about six Frostgrave warbands on the table. I've been repurposing a lot of stuff from GW line, uh, using a lot of Reaper stuff, uh, putting them all on rounds and getting them in different, they're in different levels of, of completion and I'm looking to get those done in conjunction with the, with the uh, Sylvaneth stuff, just because I've been playing a lot of Frostgrave games and I'm involved in a campaign now, so that's a big thing. All right, so you'll be seeing some Frostgrave stuff. I've actually done some videos, uh, if you go back within the last couple months, on, you know, the table. I've, I'm emulating a table from Gorilla uh, Miniature War Games, which, uh, you know, they, these guys, uh, Ash and, and, you know, the game with the cooler guy, they use, they have a, a co-op where they all, you know, they, they, they all band together for their channels and have a lot of materials that they share. Um, I, I think they have their board is fantastic. So I got some Gale Force 9 stuff that you can see on theirs, uh, which is also showcased in the Frostgrave book. I've got a bunch of stuff. Managed to find it at a couple local stores. Uh, got some, <laughs> you know, uh, aquarium stuff. Uh, built up some stuff from the <clears throat> excuse me, arcane ruins from GW. <clears throat> got the Witch Fate tour, and I'm looking for the um, the uh, uh, Dreadstone Blight, just to have some real ruins. Uh, but these are things again I can use for Age of Sigmar in various different capacities. And a lot of these uh, things, uh, like for instance the mat itself, frontline gaming mat, the Alpine mat, I can use for bolt action. So uh, again, that's uh, that's there. Um, uh, next thing up, uh, ogres. I've got a lot of ogres that I'm painting with my son, taking a long time to do it because it's really his army. And although I want to do some painting myself, I want to be able to do it with him and have him have the experience. So. That's that's a thing. <laughs> and then I have a new army that I'm looking to start up. I know, I'm insane. I haven't even come close to finishing any of these other ones. But there's so many new great releases, and I'd like to know your opinion. I'm thinking of either going full bar in the Seraphon, because there's some great deals, and that starter bundle is incredible. But a lot of people are getting involved in that. Um, but then they have the new Duarden that's coming out. And I'm not just talking about the Fire Slayers. I'm talking about the Steamhead um, Dwarves that are coming out uh, in the second quarter, so probably another couple months. Those I'm really looking forward to because I've always really went ventured. I've, I've leaned towards the heavy, heavily armored, and you know, like the iron breakers and the hammers, and the iron drakes especially. And I have a whole air force of gyrocopters, so I want something that's more in that vein. But I can't resist the fire slayer, especially the ma the magma drons, uh, droths. I think magma droths or magma droths. I don't know. The, the salamanders spitting fire that have, you know, half-naked dwarves on top of them. Yeah, I'm going to get a couple of those kits. I don't know if I'm going to get all the other ones. I'm going to try. I may consider it. But that might be a lot more than I probably could field with all the other dwarf stuff that I have. Still in boxes and still ready to be unbuilt. So that's down, down the pipe. Uh, that's definitely down the road. But I, I think I might be leaning in that direction, you know, and, and trying to save my resources uh, in that. And, of course, for bolt action, I have a whole bunch of Germans still not even built as well as my U.S. Army, which is all built, all pretty much complete, um, but hasn't been fully painted. I mean, I have a lot of base coating done, a lot of uh, regular paint stuff done on it, but not a lot of the highlighting and detailed work and, um, and shading and washes and whatnot. But, you know, far along, probably the most complete stuff that I've done in a while. And I just put it on the shelf because I have to, I have to get the uh, Sylvaneth done. Otherwise, I'm, I might as well not even be part of the the uh, budget of Sigmar effort. Anyway, a lot of stuff on the table, but let's get to some things that are going to happen in 2006 that I've got planned. Um, I've got a bunch of videos and, and ideas planned, and I'd love to get feedback from uh, the viewers and just see what kind of things you'd like to see. And if you, there are things that you're more interested in, less interested in, if you've got ideas, things that you think that might be good for, for me to put out there, I'd be happy to talk, you know, to, to address them and, and get some ideas and inspiration from you. Because, you know, I use the viewers 
uh, you know, you're the ones that are watching. And, uh, you know, I may be doing this to have fun myself, but I'm, I'm not here talking in a room by myself with a camera in front of me. It's about, you know, the connection with all of you. So I'd like to get your feedback and see what kind of direction you think I should take. And if uh, people really have any, a specific interest, I'll lean in that way. Some of the things I'm looking to do, some of the series that I'm looking to do, so you can keep an eye on it for, uh, I'm going to go and really start jumping into the rules we get wrong uh, series. And I'm specifically going to be doing this for Age of Sigmar because there's a lot of things that people do that they argue about and they have different points of view. Uh, I'm going to pretty much be imposing my view on this, so it's going to be very skewed. I'm going to warn people right now, you're probably not going to agree with me. And if you don't, that's fine. And even if you do agree with me, there's so many comps out there for Age of Sigma right now. You be, might be comping just on your own, not even in an event, just in your own group, because you feel differently about certain of these certain rules and the way some of the game is built. And that's fine. I'm going to be right doing a series on what my view, my view is, and I'm going to be backing it up and substantiating it, how this game is run pure, non-comped. How's, how it's interpreted out of the box. The, every guy who just you know downloads the PDFs and starts playing and doesn't care or know from all these different comps, what's the best way to jump in and play the game based on how it's written and why I think that's important. Whether you jump into comp down the road or if you jump into comp because you have to, you've, at least if you try to start playing the game from the outset with the rules as written, that's how I, how, 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 what I'm looking at. That's the intention because I think it's an important springboard to make the decision of what you want to do with making changes, which you have every right to do. It even says it in the fourth page of the book that people sometimes book <laughs> four pages of rules, the main core rules, because there's 400 war scrolls, um, but which are also part of the rules. But in just in terms of the four page core rules, the last paragraph is change this stuff if you don't like it. So why not? If you really want to do it, that's fine. But before you change things, try it. Try it the way it's intended. Try it the way it's written. Try to see what it is that how it really is played. And then make a decision on what you if you want to make changes, and then you'll know better when, when it comes to running to events where you, you sometimes people get pigeonholed into these comp systems. They don't know any better because they don't. They, that's the only thing that people are playing, and I don't think people sometimes give a chance to some of the basic rules because they don't realize that they kind of work. <laughs> okay, so enough of that. Um, so I'm going to have a whole rules uh, we get wrong thing, talking about summoning, talking about you know the things like reserves, ambush scouting, and and stuff like that that I think a lot of people get wrong. Not everybody, but I think a lot of people are misunderstanding that and using the conventions from previous editions or even other games to make their uh, their views on these. Um, things like cover and terrain, uh, um, shooting at like war machines, uh, let's see, um, how, you know, this is a game of war scrolls, it's not army books, so there's a real big difference, things like that. Um, you know, uh, um, there's, there's I'm sure plenty of them, and if you have ideas on things that you see that people get wrong, Write them in. Write to me. Tell me what they what you think they are. I'll put them on the list, and we'll do a whole session on it. I may have some invite you know invited guests to do those. Uh, we'll see. Um, I plan on doing the convert this series. Uh, I have so many conversions, especially in my vampire counts undead army. I think I don't think I'm gonna go crazy with a lot of conversions down the road. I still think I want to try and do a biplane for the um, Age of Sigmar as a bomber, but um, you know this it takes so long to convert. I want to get more things painted, so I'm not really sure how far I'm gonna go with that. We'll see. But I think I might do conversions just at least a little minorly in just about anything. Like things like bases and, uh, you know, how to mount figures on, uh, on you know, little, little, little things. Uh, I don't know if I'll go quite as crazy as the Vampire Count um, Nusselin theme because that's just all encompassing and it's just taking forever. And I think I was a little insane when I started. But yeah, down that path and not diverting. Um, so there's that. Uh, let's see. Uh, unlockings. Uh, probably the most popular thing I've done on the channel. Uh, people still are begging and asking for them. I still get comments on old ones that I did months ago, and I'm amazed at the amount of views that you know they, they've been getting and a lot of amount of conversation that they generate. So I've got a bunch more unlockings. First and foremost, I've got to go back to the ones that I've missed. Things like ogres, uh, some of the demons. I'm going to go and do those just for the standard war scrolls. And I really didn't do special characters for any of them because my intention was to come back and read and do all those. So I'm going to be going back. I'm already lining that stuff up. I'm going to do a converting, uh, specifically a converting episode, but um, but I want, really want to talk about you know Age of Sigmar stuff as far as uh, as the War Scrolls are concerned. I want to deal with tactics, how to deal with summoning, how to mitigate things like you know shooting, uh, uh, how to handle and, and address that. 
tactics in Age of Sigmar is far more diverse than the ragers and the haters and the butthurt guys who are upset about, you know, the loss of their, you know, their, of 8th edition as an official game system. And there's, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of tactics in the game that I don't think people take, they, they take for granted. They comp out because you know, they change the game and then they're no longer viable, or they don't even try and explore, or they don't have any idea because they never put a figure on the table and tried these rules out. Uh, there's a lot of it. I want to talk about those things. So I want to do a series on Age of Sigmar Tactics. Um, other things, uh, there's events, a lot of events. I'm actually going to be trying to sponsor a couple events locally at some of the game stores. So if you have a store in the North uh, Jersey area, it doesn't have to be in Jersey. I mean, I go to you know Brooklyn, Manhattan, uh, and you want to get you want you want to do an event like a day long or even a weekend long event, a multi day event uh, for Age of Sigmar or even for Bolt Action or Frostgrave. Uh, I'll be happy to talk to you about it and you know and let you know how that works. Uh, if you're looking to, you know to um, advertise or you want you know help you know you want me to uh, get on board you know get on a, a, a hangout and talk about your event, how it's different, what you're doing, what your comp system is, if there is any, uh, you know. I'll be happy to go in and, and increase the bandwidth for that. So let me know if you're in the local area, you know, you're tuning in and um, I'll be happy to help and I'll be happy to get involved in, in running the event as well because I have a lot of fun doing that. More importantly, I might want to actually participate. So <laughs> it might not be that I want to even run it. I'd like to actually join in. I may do that anyway uh, on some of these events. And I'm getting involved with a group of guys that I know uh, that, you know, run are looking to run some local events uh, called Gamer Grunts. And uh, I'm going to have a, uh, I'm going to actually have a hangout just talking about them and what they're doing. And it's about the story. It's about the scenario. It's about, it's a competitive game, but you're not competing against the other player that you're playing against across the table necessarily. Both of you guys, even though you're opposing uh, um, uh, forces, are competing against the scenario. You're battling the objectives in the scenario, and you might actually butt heads with the guys on the other side of the table and trying to accomplish that or prevent the other person from doing that. So there's a competitive nature, but they're really trying to structure their events. Uh, and I should say our because I'm part of the uh, the, the group. Um, the event is really about the uh, the objectives and the scenarios as opposed to crushing your opponent into dust. It's not a steamroller event. So, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I really like that, that mentality because it gets all of the hyper competitive, you know, I want to ruin your hobby, but, uh, you know, a, a step on your dead body to, you know, raise myself aloft as the victor type of mentality that is, that, it, that permeates through a lot of tournament events. Not all, but a lot. And, uh, the loss of those people in Age of Sigmar, you know, good riddance as far as I'm concerned. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, let, don't let the door hit you on the way out if you're, if you're, if you're one of those people who have left and you're still fuming about the changes. I think it's all better for it. And those of us who are in Age of Sigmar and involved with it still, we're better off uh, not having to deal with those ty types of people when we go to events. So these are events where it's a competitive nature. There's certainly going to be prizes. Uh, there's certainly going to be, uh, you know, th things that you'll, you'll, you could win or and there could be a victory in the event, certainly, depending on how well you do. But it's not on the back of somebody else necessarily. It's more of a um, beat the beat the scenario type of thing. Uh, well, aside from that, I am always looking for games. Uh, it's not that I have a lack of games. I just had had a lack of excuse me time over the past like roughly three months. Uh, but I'm always looking for games. If you're in the tri-state area, mainly in the North Jersey area or within reasonable commuting distance, I live in Madison, New Jersey, which is not too far from Morristown, uh, but. There's a lot of different stores around here. I know a bunch of stores, some that really uh, have great terrain, uh, great places to play. Um, you know, the uh, Brooklyn Strategist I've traveled to and uh, great, oh, gorgeous place. I did a video on them recently, but, you know, the Bearded Dragon in Bernardsville, the only game in town in Somerville, Time Warp Comics and Games, uh, um, Highlander uh, Games and Comics, great places. Oh, and, of course, Maplewood, you know, I, Maplewood Hobby, uh, there's a lot of places, and I'm sure I'm leaving some out, but there's, that's just to name a few. There's a lot of places I go and I frequent, and I know players all around, among all of them, and players that also, you know, for various reasons, uh, travel to various different ones. So uh, I'm always looking for games. If you're in the area, reach out to me. I'll be happy to schedule something if we can try to work it out with uh, both of our schedules. Um, and that's, that's uh, well, the last thing is, is um, uh, uh, Patreon. You know, I, I have a bunch of people that have uh, uh, subscribed to me in Patreon, uh, and through Patreon, and 
or portraying, however you pronounce it. And uh, I want to thank them. You know, uh, it's been it's 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 not it's not a lot of money, but it's a nice token gesture. And uh, I put that towards some improvements in the channel. There's some things I still want to do, uh, some things I still want to get, and um, improvements in general. Like I want to get a better webcam, one that actually you know has a widescreen element to it, because I know this one still this is. This is an old crappy one, but uh, something that actually is not going to show up as fuzzy. Uh, I've made some adjustments and made some improvements, and I want to give back too. So I want to start doing some um, some some giveaways. Uh, but I'm looking to actually increase the subscriber base to the channel, and I'm looking to increase uh, Patreon. Uh, if you're not interested in donating, don't don't you don't have to. If you want to go and throw in a dollar a month or whatever you're interested in, I'm going to put it towards the channel and I'm put it towards the quality and I'm start putting out putting it towards the videos. But I'm also going to start. Sending, you know, putting out two specifically to Patreon uh, um, subscribers and somewhat to regular subscribers as well um, giveaways. So right now I'm looking to jump to hopefully 2,000 uh, um, subscribers. Uh, again, I don't have a lot of subscribers. Um, I appear on a lot of shows, uh, but you know it's not a lot. And uh, but I'm looking to get. I'd love to get to 2,000, just another milestone. Um, and if I can get the uh, Patreon up. Uh, you know, to uh, you know, up over the hump of another, I guess you know, increment of 10. I'll probably I'll load some unopened boxes or you know uh, purchase something and then put it up on the channel. Uh, maybe give away one of the hardcover books that I have. It doesn't have to be just Age of Sigmar. It could be other things that I'm and I got or I'm getting. Um, and and we'll see what kind of stuff I can go and give back, just as incentives or things that people are interested in. I'd be happy to do it. So there you have it. Uh, that's my update for 2016. Uh, an answer to Vince's topic of the week. Where have I been? Am I still alive? Yes, I am. And, you know, what's to come? So I hope you enjoy. Please continue to tune in. I can't promise it's going to be with the incredible regularity that you may have come to expect from not only my channel in the past, but from other channels. But, you know, I'll, I'll be kicking out content and I'll be present throughout other channels as well. And just happy to be part of the community and appreciate, you know, the support of the viewers uh, from the, the uh, Patreon uh, uh, donators and just, you know, happy to, happy to, you know, help other people join in and, and, and make their own channel and spread the community, increase the community, uh, uh, and, and just make it a better place and a more enjoyable place uh, to, uh, to engage in. So uh, happy playing and uh, have a great day, everybody.